Ukraine is entering its third winter of a full-scale war unleashed by Russia. In the east, the defense forces are losing ground under the onslaught of the Russian occupation forces, although it is costing the invaders huge losses. In Kiev, as well as in Washington and some western capitals, the mood is changing, the Financial Times reports. The determination that the war will end only when Russia's army leaves Ukraine is being replaced by a grudging recognition that the best option is a negotiated settlement that leaves most of the country intact. But Kiev lacks support even for that goal. Ukraine's prospects are clouded above all by the possible victory of Republican Donald Trump in the US elections. He has repeatedly said that he wants to end the war quickly. Some US and European officials hope that Trump can at least be deterred from forcing Kyiv into an unfavorable deal with Moscow that would create serious risks to European and American security in the future. But as the war in the Middle East escalates, even some Western capitals that previously insisted on the need for a military victory over Russia are rethinking their goals. Some Kyiv officials also privately complain that they lack the manpower, firepower, a Western support to take all the territory Russia has seized. So behind closed doors, there is talk of a deal in which Russia would retain control of the captured territories. Moscow retains de facto control over about a fifth of Ukraine, which it has occupied, although Russia's sovereignty over it is not recognized, while the rest of the country is allowed to join NATO or given equivalent security guarantees, the newspaper writes. Under this umbrella, Ukraine could also recover and integrate with the EU like West Germany during the Cold War. But such a scenario rests on ambitious assumptions. One is that the United States and its allies should be prepared to offer Ukraine NATO membership or the necessary guarantees. But they have so far been reluctant to offer Kyiv guarantees of joining the alliance. This would require a huge and costly deployment of forces by the US and its partners and would leave them on a Cold War style stretch. The article says, the second assumption is that Russian President Vladimir Putin could be persuaded to negotiate and accept such a scenario. But preventing Ukraine from joining NATO has been one of the Kremlin's stated war aims. It is also doubtful that Putin has any incentive to agree to land for peace talks if he believes his army can still conquer more territory. Wildfires driven by ferocious winds and fueled by dry conditions raged through parts of western North Dakota over the weekend, leading to one death and forcing more than 100 people to evacuate their homes. Officials don't expect the region's tinder dry conditions to improve soon. Six significant wildfires were reported, and four of them were nearly or completely contained, state officials said Monday. Downed power lines were believed to have ignited at least some of the fires. The fires burned in scattered areas over a vast swath of North Dakota's oil fields, including agricultural land, grassland and rugged badlands terrain where small, rural towns dot the map. Wind gusts reported Saturday morning in areas of western and central North Dakota ranged from 57 mph to 75 mph, according to the National Weather Service. Most of western North Dakota is in some level of drought, according to the U.S. Drought Monitor. The 44-square-mile Elkhorn Fire near Grassy Butte was 20% contained Monday, and the 18-square-mile Bear Den Fire near Mandaree was 0% contained, according to the State Department of Emergency Services. Johannes Nicholas Van Eden, 26, of South Africa, died during a large fire near Ray in northwest North Dakota, the Williams County Sheriff's Office said Sunday. Detective Dan Ward declined to say how he died, citing an active investigation. Another person was critically injured, the Sheriff's Office said.